Yes. With me, Pat Porter. Let's stop everything, Pat yeah, Porter. Right, Let's yeah, stop right, everything right, right. because I have done something great for your radio program About and, time. and my radio program. Never before have we had an Olympic weightlifting champion gold medalist pro wrestler the size of this man right here, the Olympic strongman Ken Patera. How are you doing? Hello, Ken. Ken yourself. That's, <laughs> Ken. Quite an in- that's quite an introduction. Thank you. Yes, yes. Well, I'm excited. I'm I'm totally excited, as uh, as you know, because uh, the great Ken Patera, Pal Porter. This is a man that influenced me in, in, in even getting involved in pro wrestling myself down here in Ontario. But uh, but Ken Patera, you were the man when I was a young child. It looking good, lifting lifting cars, Pal Porter. You can go on YouTube. This man lifted cars. He was in the Olympics. This is a man's man. Man here, yeah. Ken, Ken Patera. I know. I go back a ways, a little longer than you do, and I, I know it was exploits back uh, in the yeah. earlier days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, good. <laughs> but so you guys are from uh, Ontario? Yeah, we're from Ontario, and uh, and where I seen you live here was uh, old school Toronto Maple Leaf Gardens. Uh, you know, uh, Frank Tunney, Jack Tunney promotions. When when they used to yell, yeah. Ken, they used to yell Ken Potato as the fans. They used to call you Ken Potato. <laughs> well, that's better than some of the things I've been called, I guess. Yes. No, no. Listen, it made much respect for to you, Ken, because I find what's fascinating when you watch wrestling like nowadays, like and, like if you look at your old pictures, where where you were, you know. Like I said on YouTube, the world's strongest man, like lifting cars and everything. The body, the look, and the 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 beautiful outfit you had with the pants and the and the ring attire that you had out there, looking good for the camera. Like that is something that is, still holds up today compared to like all this production and what you see today. Like you have to be a man's man, and it just makes me happy to like uh, uh, talk to somebody like you. Like what drives your spark as a young man? Where did you come from? Like you, you got into the Olympics, you were in uh, uh, all the these uh, athletic sports and gotten into pro wrestling at the highest level. Yeah, well, uh, when I was 17 years old, I uh, I had just graduated from high school. Yeah, and there was a gym, uh, a neighborhood gym, just up the street from where I grew up. It was called La Prince's Gym. Okay, and that's where all the the wrestlers would train. Yeah. And I had watched wrestling a little bit on TV. Yeah. But uh, my main interest then was weightlifting. Right. And uh, so a couple of the wrestlers happened to be Olympic weightlifters. Yeah. Uh, weightlifters, you know. And uh, one of them, Herb Freeman, taught me how to do the Olympic lifts. Oh wow! And you did it. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what make what what drives you all the way to the Olympics to do this? You know, I can hardly hear you. Is our connection bad, or I don't know? Can you hear me now, Ken Patera? The volume. The volume, Pat Porter. Yeah, I'm cranking up the volume on your voice, Jay. It's pretty can you hear me? Thing. Can you hear me, Ken? Here, just a minute. Maybe it's my phone. Hold on. Okay. Just a minute. All right. The great Ken Patera. New book out, Pat Porter. I'm going to yeah, talk I about that. I think it's my problem here. Hold on. Okay. Anyways, Ken Patera is the author of a new there book. There you go. I think we're back on. Are yeah. we back on, Ken Patera? Yes. Can you hear me? Everything's good? Yeah, it's a low volume, but... I got my volume all the way up. Okay. Well, I just hope that you can hear me because I don't want to lose uh, an Olympic gold medalist. I'm the world's strongest man. No. Hello? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so what, uh, what would you like to talk to well, you know, uh, me about today? Like, uh, it's just uh, some of the highlights that I remember you on. Maybe you got some stories. Of, like, I first remember you teaming with Big John Stud, managed by Bobby Heenan. The old school days, I think you were taping in Allenburg, were you not, as a pro wrestler? Like, uh, like reflect on those days and some of the stories that may be in your book that you want to talk about, Way to the World. Yeah, well, after uh, 40 years in the business, almost 50 years, Yeah, I had so many uh, requests uh, from, you know, friends and uh, just associates and 
family members and, uh, you know, are you ever going to write a book about yourself? I says, well, I said, there's been a couple books written about me, but, you know, from friends and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, but they were about weightlifting. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so I, uh, I decided to sit down and, uh, I hired a guy, uh, to write it for me. Yeah. And you know, after I would give him all the information and everything, I talked to this guy every Wednesday for a year and a half. Oh, wow. About a year, uh, hour and a half. Yeah. Telling stories and, for the and, book. And, uh. Once, <clears throat> yeah, me, we must really have a bad connection. My volume's all the way up, and I can barely hear you. Okay, you can't hear me, Ken. Uh, uh, if you turn the volume up. Well, I'm trying to get the volume up, Pat Porter. Am I in the right? Am I in the right microphone? <laughs> Don't blame me. <laughs> yeah, yeah right you're microphone? you're fine. That's your microphone okay. there. Your, your level is pretty good. I uh, can't get the volume up anymore on your phone call, so. You have to okay. put it to your ear a little closer you can. Maybe that'll help. Yeah, well, I can't put it any closer. I damn near have this phone stuck up my ass. Right oh, wow. <laughs> well, sometimes that'll work. You never know. You know? Give it a yeah, try, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the vibration. Good vibration. <laughs> yeah, huh? yeah. Well, we'll keep it tight yeah. then, Ken. Like, uh, the, basically, we'll get to the weight of the world. The book is which I was talking about. It's got your stories. Wrestling Andre the Giant 600 times. I don't know anybody that has done that. Like, it's it's interesting that you came from these experiences of the 80s wrestling era when you, kind of you, you guys paved the road for building the business. Absolutely, to what it is today. Yeah, well, I started in 1973, January of 73. Yeah. Officially. And uh, the training camp I went through had uh, uh, Jumpin' Jim Brunzel and Greg Gagne. Yeah, Iron Sheik. Uh, uh, yeah, the, the Iron Sheik. Ric Flair. Ric Flair. Ric Flair and I were living together. We had a house. Oh yeah, that were renting out. We had a couple roommates, and so uh, Rick would uh, ask me every day, every day for over a year to talk to Vern Gagne about getting him into the wrestling <laughs> camp. I said, Rick, I'm still training for the Olympic Games. Right. I'm not. We don't have a training camp yet. Yeah. And so a year and a half, maybe even two years later. <laughs> uh, I I took uh, Rick down to the wrestling office, introducing him to Vern Gagne. Oh, nice! We got him all. We got him situated, and uh, we were on the road. So you were living. <laughs> you were you were living with Ric Flair before he was even in wrestling. So you knew him from before. Yeah, for two years. Oh, wow! That's interesting. So, really, you're responsible yeah, for getting I, him in. I had moved uh, from Portland, Oregon, back to Minneapolis. Yeah. And uh, my oldest brother, Jack, he was defensive line coach for the Minnesota Vikings. Oh, wow! And uh, he, yeah, he and he knew Vern Guy and yes, fairly well, and so he called Vern and. Got uh, an appointment uh, set up, and then, then you know, uh, a month or two later, I had bumped into Rick. Uh, Rick grew up here in uh, Minneapolis. Yeah, and so we, uh, he was living at home. He was twenty-one years old. Of course, I was out on my own. I was twenty, twenty-five. How old was I? Twenty-six. Oh wow. A young Cam I was 26 yeah. at the time, but I, you know, I trained for the Pan American Games, World Championships, yeah. uh, Olympic Games, uh, you know, the whole nine yards. So my my career in weightlifting was just peaking. Oh wow! Wow! So I, you know, I I still had my eye on professional wrestling for uh, when I retired from weightlifting. Yeah. 
Was it hard uh, to transition? Was it hard to transition from the weightlifting and the athletics into wrestling? Because what I hear of Vern Garnia's camp was it was tough to go through. Is that true? Yeah, it was. It was a tough camp. Yeah. Uh, I weighed. Uh, I weighed about three twenty. Yeah. Wow. And Rick weighed about two ninety. And of course. Uh, professional wrestling you do a lot of cardio you know a lot of running yeah a lot of calisthenics and uh whatnot and so uh the guys that we were uh in camp with they were all pretty lean yeah uh you know compared to us you know we were the beef <laughs> yeah yeah you were the muscle yeah 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 and so uh yeah but yeah, we got through, you know, those camps are like five and six hours long every day. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they weren't, they weren't like an hour and a half, two hour training camps. No, this is and, the real uh, deal. Yeah. At the end, we'd go run a mile. After the and, training. Uh, yeah. But uh, prior to that, then we, we'd do 500 uh, Hindu squats and all kinds of calisthenics and so I mean we were, see, I started camp at 320 when camp finished uh, eight weeks later I was 280 oh wow you dropped all that weight yeah, yeah 40, 40, 40 pounds I, yeah. I, I wasn't trying to lose weight no, you were working, <laughs> but it's it's a, uh, a huge difference. Like today, you don't see that. Like everybody that in that camp that you're talking about has made it in pro wrestling. You're talking about Jim Brunzel, the Garnias. You're talking about Iron Sheik. Like you were talking about yeah. all these men have made it. Like um, he made stars, Vern Garnia. Yeah, we're all main eventers. Yeah, we're yeah. all main eventers. Every one of you. Yeah, that's that that yeah. is, that is great. What was it like uh, teaming with John Studd? Because it was my favorite tag team, but I hear stories that Andre didn't really like them and, and things like that. It, 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 were, were you okay with that? Because I thought it was I, a great I tag team. I can barely hear you. You can barely hear uh, me still? Yeah, we, we just got a bad connection, I guess. Oh, okay. Yeah, because everything's uh, working. There, on our, right, no, no, no. Volume. Yeah. Uh, but uh, what was that about the tag team now? I was It was one of my favorite tag teams growing up, Ken Patera and, and Big John Studd, and I was just curious as how John Studd was to work with because I've heard stories that maybe Andre didn't really like him, and, and, and I don't know, is he a problem? Because I thought it was a great tag team. Well, that was uh, – I, I had tagged with uh, John – we had the Mid-Atlantic uh, Tag Team Championships a couple of years before that. Yeah. And we held those, oh, God, I don't know, uh, for a while. Yeah. And then, uh, and then uh, I was uh, Tag Team Partners with Jerry Blackwell. Oh, wow. Uh, off and on. But the, my main thing was single matches. That's how I wound up wrestling Andre. 600 yeah. times. Yeah. <laughs> 600 and, times. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. People say, well, that's impossible. No. I said, well, Andre added everything up we, between the tag teams. For sure. And the uh, four man or six man tags, eight man tags, battle royals, because we were always the last two in the ring and during the battle royal season. Yeah. Yeah. And uh and then uh um uh, individually, you know, uh I probably wrestled him uh four hundred times in single matches and then the last two hundred would have been, you know, battle royals and Tag team matches. Well, that's amazing. That's when you're on the road uh, every day of the week, twice on Saturday, twice on Sunday, doing shows. It adds up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's... we're wrestling uh, probably three three hundred thirty days a year on average. Yeah, yeah. Uh, back in those days, yeah. What What was your highlight, yeah. Ken? Do you have one? Do you Do you have a favorite moment? I know it sounds corny, but I'm curious as to what your highlight of your career, in your opinion, is. Well, everybody asks me that. Really? Uh, you know, 
after 6,000 matches yeah. and 20 some years on the road, it's uh, pretty hard to pick any. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyone out, you know. Yeah, I guess it just flows in like you're 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 working literally all the top guys on the road. The the way business used to be in the old days is just uh, a very fascinating to me. It's such a change. Do you follow anything today? Probably not. I would guess. Would you? No. Yeah. No, I don't. Uh, uh, well, the the guy that broke uh, Brock Lesnar in. Oh yeah. I, He's a good friend of mine, uh, his name uh, Brad Reagan. Oh, right, yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Brad wrestled, uh, oh, God, he wrestled for about 15, maybe 20 years. Yeah. But uh, he was a hell of an amateur. Yeah. I just talked to Brad about a week ago. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, boy. And, uh... Go ahead. No, I was just thinking. I Brad Riggins. If it, 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 in my mind, was he also an Olympic wrestler or something? I don't really recall. Yeah, well, he was on the Olympic team in 1980, right. but then uh, uh, the United States canceled uh, because of Jimmy Carter was president. Yeah, and he didn't yeah. like the way uh, Russia was treating the. Uh, people in Afghanistan. Yeah. And uh, nobody could really figure out what the fuck did that have uh, with the United, have to do with the United States Olympic team. Yeah, what does it have to do? Uh, it, yeah, so anyway, Carter uh, boycotted the 1980 Olympics and Brad wasn't able to compete. <laughs> Brad would have won the gold medal. Really? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, because... <clears throat> He was two-time uh, world champion. Uh, the the two years uh, prior to the Olympics, he yeah. won uh, uh, world uh, wrestling uh, championships. Yeah, and so he, you know, it would have been the same competitors in the Olympics. So you know, he was odds-on favorite to walk away with the gold medal. Wow. Yeah, but Brad uh, Reagan's. Because of the boycott, that didn't happen. Yeah. Well, it's such a, a circle of people that you know. It's, a, it's, it's, it's very star-studded. What was it like working for Vince, in a way? Because you would have known him when he was young, you know? Young. Like, yeah. uh, it, it's just kind of well, different than the way he is now, you know? Yeah, Vince is a year younger than I am. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh... I have a birthday in two weeks. I'll be 80. Yes. Happy birthday, Ken so, Patera. Yes. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So we so, have a big uh, party planned. I have some friends of mine. They always have a big party for me. Yeah. And uh, since this is my 80th birthday, uh, last year, uh, Jimmy Brunzel showed up. Uh, Jesse Ventura showed up. Nice. Yeah. So nice. we had uh, about 25 people, I guess. That's more than enough. Yeah, we just had Jesse down here for a convention last year. It, it was great to see Jesse. Uh, I'm assuming that. And you guys are Minnesota boys, too. Yeah. Well, I grew up in Portland, Oregon. But, right. Uh, I li I've lived here off and on for you know, a long time. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, Jimmy Brandell, he, he was born and raised here. Uh, same with Jesse Ventura. Yeah. He grew up here in Minnesota. So yeah, it was quite a crew that came yeah, out of Minnesota. At one time, uh, I think, uh, probably, uh, a third of the main eventers in pro wrestling around the country were born and raised in Minnesota. Absolutely, because you also had Rick Rude, you also had Kurt Henning, you also had the Road Warriors, you know, just the top of my head that I know of. Yeah, John Nord. Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, Norton. Uh, oh, God, there's just, you know, a ton of guys. 
Yeah. Yeah. We're talking oh. to Olympic strongman Ken Patera. The, the book is Weight of the World. Ken, do you uh, uh, you go into detail about the? Uh, can we talk about the Mr. Saito incident or not? No. Okay. We don't have enough time. Okay. I think we're already at the time allotment that you said that we're going to be. Absolutely, Ken Matera. If you said that you needed me for an hour, I would have prepared. No, this is perfect. I stretched it out to enough time. This has been great. Ken Patera, the book is Way to the World, and uh, you can pick it up at KenPatera.com, can you not? Yeah. And you Ken autograph Patera. it. KenPatera.com is the best way, and then just put a request there for me to autograph, uh, if you want me to autograph the book. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're right. Ken Patera. Yeah, we've had great success so far, so I'm really happy with uh, the results, and I'm happy that I wrote the damn thing. <laughs> I am, too. I am, too. I'm happy with the results, and I'm glad the book is doing well, and uh, I suggest everybody go to KenPatera.com to pick that up, because it's a great read while it's getting into the colder months, and uh, it's fascinating to read about the life of Ken Patera, and I appreciate, Ken, you have, uh, coming on the air with us, and, uh, and all the best to you, my man. Well, we can do a two-part series if you if you'd like, and we'll get this audio fixed. I would love to. Yeah, I, I I can hardly hear you. Okay, to tell you the truth. Okay, we'll we'll, we'll come back with Ken Patera at a future date, and we'll do it all over again. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, guys. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Ken. You have a great uh, weekend. What's left of it? You bet. Now, see when when you come on, I can hear. Oh yeah, no, so kidding. I, okay. Well. I, yeah. Maybe it's my microphone. I don't know what's going on. We'll, we'll, we'll fix Jay Moore. We'll find out what his problem is. You know what? They're screwing me here, Ken. That's what they're doing. <laughs> I bring in a big guest down here, and then they want to give me a bad microphone. It's a joke. <laughs> are you guys in the same studio? Yes, yeah. we are, yeah. 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 Huh. Yeah, we're stuck with okay. each other all the time, Ken. It's Pat Porter screwing with me. <laughs> That's all it is. <laughs> Okay. Thanks for coming out with us, Ken. We're going to get you back here and talk some more. Yeah, next time we'll go for uh, 30 minutes. Yeah, next time I'll ask the, the question so you can hear what I'm talking about. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Ken. Appreciate it. Okay, take care, Ken. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Bye, man. All right, there, there goes Ken, Ken Patera, okay, infamous Jay Moore. Yeah, what are you uh, doing to me? What are you doing no, to me? No, no, er, everything's or? fine. I oh, think yeah. uh, Ken's what, he's going to be 80 in a little while, and he's probably got cauliflower ears. So so maybe that's the, the maybe problem. That's you know. it. Well, he can hear your mic, and he can't hear my mic, so that just proves yeah, to me well, that you're screwing with he me. Wa he Every wants to listen. Every time I bring a guest in, you 